Good. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. It's a new week, new homework week, new month. Um, welcome to November. Um, okay, so we're here to do our homework explanation slash what we're doing video like we do each week. Um, I have Vicki from Reading and Stitching up here on YouTube or um, Headmistress of Magical Stitches. I also have Lady, uh, Lady. <laughs> I was like trying to mix Lisa and Shady. Like anyway, Lady. Yeah. Um, Lisa from Shady Tree Stitchers here on YouTube or Paddock Lane Designs on Facebook. I am Sammy J from Sammy J Stitches and also from Virtual Stitchers. Um, a group we never talk about. <laughs> so um, today we're going to go over Magical Stitches, Daily 30, um, Crystal Academy, and a little bit of semi -Sing. So Vicki, you want to take it away? Yeah, I'm stitching right now. Also, while I'm doing this, I'm working with Crunchy Ada. I don't like Crunchy Ada. <laughs> Ugh, can't stand Crunchy Ada. Okay, <clears throat> so we are back with the Kingdom Keepers. We have two more this book, um, Dark Passages, and then we have our final one. Then we move on to our next series, so yay. But, so this week, task one, King, wake up, I phone. King Triton sent dolphins to rescue Finn and Willa from the ocean. Stitch on a whip that has an ocean animal. Okay, so I'm first, and I think this is kind of a little obvious at this point. But I'm going to work on the Dark Queen of the Seas, Sal, because it has fish and she is something water related. Hashtag not a mermaid, question mark, anybody? We don't know yet, but um, her top part got released this today. <laughs> yeah, really so, released. Yeah, like, uh, so anyway, Ooh, I think we, I'm gonna work on it. Do hmm? we have boobies? Yes. Yes. Well, they have they have two versions. So one is classier and one is nudier. Um, <laughs> whatever your preference. Yeah. No naked on Zoom though, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no naked on Zoom. Okay. All right, Lisa. What are you going to be working on? Well, you're not going to be surprised to see this one coming out again. I mean, My amazing animal kingdom. There's plenty of um, oceanic animals there, and in fact, this would cover any prompt that might have anything to do with an animal. Okay. Because I'm trying to focus on it because it's, it's for Shell's um, scavenger hunt and I want to try and get next level done. Yes, me too. That's, I need to focus on that. All right, Vicki? Uh, I think I'm, I'm going to work on my villains because Ursa is an octopus and she lives in the ocean. She does. There you go. Okay, task two. The kingdom keepers were attacked by hyenas. Stitch on a whip with an animal in the canine family. So we would include dogs, wolves. Is fox canine or female? I don't know. I will look. Google. Yeah, I would have said a fox or a canine. Okay, canine. let's just see. Because I, I honestly don't know what's all in the canine family. Let's, let's Google it. What? Um, by the way, I'm looking at my whip. Well, I can share. Well, I was going to say, while you're looking, you know what mine's going to be. Because I've got a fox right here. In here hmm. lie my needles. I really think a fox is a canine animal. It's got a, it's got a, a face just like my dog. Oh, it does. Yeah. So, fox so according to the, uh, the Britannica. Mm-hmm. Uh, any of the 36 living species of foxes, wolves, jackals, and other members of the dog family. Found throughout the world, they tend to be slender, long-legged animals with long muzzles, bushy tails, and ears. Okay. Ears. Well, then here lie my needles. I have this little bushy tail fox. Mm. There you go. So awesome. Hey, you know what? We learned something new today. It's good to learn things and get the official definition. What you got, Vicky? Uh, I'm gonna work on my advent animals because animal number four, he's up here, was a dog. Oh yes, you're Scotty. And I only have three animals left to go. <laughs> so I kind of want, oh, well, three and a half. I kind of want to get these done. <laughs> cool. Okay. We ready for task three? Yes. Yep. 
The Kingdom Keepers use wave phones for communication. Stitch on a, well, I left off whip. I wrote stitch on a with. <laughs> yeah. That has, well, we something, that has something used for communication. Oh, that's an interesting one. What did I do there? <laughs> Sometimes I well, wonder I'm what I do to myself. I'm glad you're here because I um, I have a question that will be answered. Why don't you go ahead, Lisa, while I look? All right. Well, here we go. Can I use this because she uses her mouth for communication? I guess we could. Yes, I guess mouth would work because we do yep. communicate that way. We do. Or she uses her ribbon and flags people down as well. So, mm -hmm. but I was thinking the simple answer of the mouth. So I guess, yeah, I never thought yep. about that. I was just, you know, they use phones. So I was mm. thinking communication, but yeah, that would work. Technology. Yep. Cool. Letters, pens, pencils, you know, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I'm trying to think. My hawk. My Hawker and Hollow is in there. <laughs> How many stitches is it? Just, everything's 200 this time. It's real easy. What about, okay, I've got a thought. Let's see how creative this is. What about like a gravestone? Because it communicates who is in the grave. And it has the writing engraved on the gravestone, which is- Yeah, a that's, a, that's a form of communication. That would work. So thinking outside the box just a little bit. Yeah, I will probably use my year a hawk run. Why? Well, they have a lot of people talking. They have wedding bells. They have a church bell clanging and a mm. church bell clangs the time or when yep. something big is happening. So I would probably use, I'm going to use my year at hawk run. Lisa, do you have that whip? Uh, no. No, I thought you did. Okay. I have village. All right. Yeah. But it has a church on it and it has church bells. So that's a form, especially in, um, that's how they used to communicate. The school bell would ring. That's how they let me know it's time to change classes. So that's what I would do. Yep, cool. What's next? Okay. Uh, Wayne was hiding out in a submarine. T stitch on something that is submerged and tell what it is. Something submerged. So that means fully covered, right? Fully covered or partially submerged? It has to be submerged, so. Ooh, I got one. I got one. All right. Oops, that's yeah. the wrong one. Hold on. We had a, an, <laughs> yeah, inception moment there. Okay. This well is submerged under the water. Oh, he he is. is. Look at that. He is so is that not. mermaid, that mer person up there? Are you stitching mm -hmm. that one? Yeah, um, so that means I can use my shores for two of the things. Okay, so right, I'm... I, got, I got a question. Oh, sorry, right. I, got a, I got a question for you before in case I have to think again. On Anzac, I have this crocodile coming out of the waves. But he's not submerged. No, so you want him totally under the water. Maybe submerged. Well, a submarine is submerged. Okay. I'll They're not... Um... I'll keep looking while you go. Okay. So I'm actually, okay. Yeah, I'm using Etsy right now. So just so you know, hang on, let me see if I can open this up in a new a new tab. Just the image. There we go. I don't want that. There we are. So I'll share mine because I think. Okay. So there's mine. And I got a bunch of fishies submerged in the water here. Mm -hmm. And over on the next one, it looks mm -hmm. like, are they submerged in that creek? Or yes, submerged like beneath it. the earth. Yeah, submerged yeah. beneath the earth. Um, and up there is that on uh, June is my church bill and how they communicate. Yeah, cool. Okay, I got to stop sharing. There we go. Well, I think I'm probably going to have to go similar to you guys. Um, I've got to find the actual one that I want. And my husband's just coming home right now. Um, I haven't got that on there. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, I would go with my, um, my village of Hawkrun Hollow because I know it's got a river with fishies in it too because it's a very standard thing on those patterns. So submerged, 
it means fully encased, right? It doesn't necessarily mean in water. Right, no. So, um, you know how Jesse, Jesse Marie, I'm gonna throw, throw her out here because you know how she stitches on her village of Hawk Run and they've got those coffin graves where the skull, skeletons are there. That would be submerged because they're, they're in the ground. Mm-hmm. So. Well, because I was even thinking of like something within something. You know? Yeah, because look, hang on. The one I'm, the, my whip that I'm working on right now, if we look, my, they are encased mm -hmm. in a bubble. Does right. that make sense? So they're in this bubble. So they're not really some, I mean, I guess they could be, they're submerged in the atmosphere. They're encased. So yeah. If yeah. you want to say it's encased in something, yeah. So, because I was also thinking, trying to, broaden it for some people like the words are encased within or submerged mm -hmm. within the key yeah you can use in case mm -hmm. too that would work because submerge means in case yeah that would work all right so okay. what about well i cannot uh, so with what you're saying with this one i could potentially use something like this one because those those um reindeers are submerged inside that border would that work Mm-hmm. Yes. Yep. Okay, cool. So yeah, it doesn't have to be water. That's good. Right. Okay. Oh, hang on. I move my phone. Oh, come on. It doesn't recognize my face. All right. Last one. Oh. Uh Tia Delon is the witch doctor that practices black magic. If you guys know her, she's from uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Got them weird teeth. I just want to take it the toothbrush and make her brush your teeth. They're icky. Okay. Her magic uses bones and voodoo dolls. Stitch on a whip that has something she, that she could use as a voodoo doll. And explain. Hmm. I think, mm, definitely, I think I'm going to go with legendary creatures for this one. Because, um, I mean, who wouldn't want to use a little leprechaun as a voodoo doll? Like, <laughs> I don't like them in the first place, and then I can torture somebody else using them. Leprechaun all day long. Yeah. <laughs> oh, maybe. Maybe I could do a new start. What? New start? And do my gorgeous gum nuts as a voodoo doll. Because if they were actually a plush gum nut that would make a voodoo doll right i'm gonna yep. use my advent animals because come on how many <laughs> stuffed creatures can i have yeah <laughs> so yeah okay and that everything is 200 stitches penalty stitches is 300 so yeah all right and that takes yeah. care of magical stitches for this week yep that was easy not bad at all all right lisa take us away with cross stitching journal and daily 30 remember this is a closed group um she's not accepting any new members at this time we simply tell you about this group one to double dip with the other groups show you how that we use the same stitches for multiple things and also um for those that are in the group you can kind of see how we think about things i should oh, one second, I'm gonna throw in a disclaimer here and I meant to do this at the beginning and the end of the last video is that this is all strictly our opinion. I mean, outside of Vicky being here to approve because she's a headmistress, but like when we say something about Crystal Academy or, or Daily 30, that's just how we interpret it. We are not necessarily right. We do not write the laws. Um, so I know last week after we posted the video, Hannah um, of Crystal Academy was like, yeah, you can't use articles. So sometimes we're wrong, uh, but we're human and we're just doing the best we can. So go Lisa, go. Okay, this week it's all about gourds. And gourds are the, I'm gonna just quickly show you the heading. Oh, where's the camera? <laughs> they are gourds. Mm -hmm. I'm showing you that because I didn't know what gourds were. Um, gourds. Uh, species of vines bearing coiled climbing tendrils and some of the most unusual fruits in the world. Apparently not that unusual in your part of the world. So you can do 200, 300 or 400 stitches on some of these and some are specific. So the first one is you're talking about squash, pumpkins and gourds are fruits because they're part of flowering plants that contain seeds. Um, however, 
Squash and pumpkin are typically prepared like a vegetable and grapes or melons, gourds, uh, fruit that grow on a vine. Stitch on a piece that has a vine in the design. Okay, Vicki. Um, I'm gonna go with Hawk Run. And the way I'm gonna double dip. Um, do, I need, do I need to show Hawk Run again? No, I think we got it. Hang on though, let's make sure I got a vine. Is there vines in there? Yeah, around the around the wedding thing, it looks like a vine with strawberries yeah. on it. Yep. Strawberry vine. So yep, because that way I can double dip. Okay. And I will be double dipping legendary creatures because this little dude up here has vines. He does. Oh, you're finally getting to use this one. Well, I am going to be using Little House Neighborhood. And because the border around Little House Neighborhood is totally vines. Yep. Okay, next one. Ornamental gourds native to the new world. Um, and they were then domesticated in Mexico. So put stitches into a piece that has something domesticated in the design. I, do I go or who goes? You go. I'm going to use my advent animals because there's a cat and there's a dog in there. I love my advent animals. They are so great for these challenges. They are. You're going to miss them when they're gone. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> no, I'm going to be adding some new things. Okay. Um, I kind of want to use... I want to use Anzac. So, like, I had a domesticated rabbit once. And there's a dog in there. Is there? Okay. I mean, you would know better than I would. It's, <laughs> it's your thing. There's um, a dog. Yep. Where? Show me. Um, where's the dog? Where did I see the dog? I know there's a dog in there somewhere. Well, you can have a domesticated parrot. Yeah. Yeah, you can have a parrot that lives in the house. Yeah. I, oh, this. Isn't oh, this? Yeah, the there's the dog. Yes, I knew there was someone in there, Kelly. There's the dog. Yeah, and like I said, I had domesticated rabbits at one point, and I've, I've had a domesticated parrot before, too, so. Okay, well, I, took, I took a different line. I went domesticated, as in I live in a domestic house. Houses are domesticated. Mm -hmm. Plus, this particular house opens up to being a pin cushion and a needle keep, and doing sewing is very domesticated. So I took a different angle. There you go. Um, next one is when they're dried, the um, skin hardens into a wood-like texture. Um, throughout history, they've been used as tools, drinking and eating vessels, musical instruments, and bird houses. So you have to stitch on a whip that has any of the, those things in the design. A tool, a drinking or eating vessel, a musical instrument, bird house, or a sponge, because they used to make bath sponges. Look! I'm stitch, literally stitching on a bird house. Well, that's lucky for you. <laughs> that was not, I, I, I was, I was laughing when I, when you said bird house, I was like, wait, mm. I'm stitching on a bird house. Well, you could start your um, daily 30 as of last Friday. So there's nothing wrong with that. Can you read through them again real quick for me, Lisa? Yep. It is um, a tool, a drinking or eating vessel, musical instrument, bird house, or sponge. Got a cup, fork, spoon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Or a violin. Ooh, musical instrument. There you go. Garden prelude. He's so pretty. Good choice. Well, mm -hmm. mine, I had to look hard. And I actually decided to use my big red ship of life. And I don't know if you can see this little guy over here on the left. He has a forked foot and he looks like a rake or a fork. And sometimes you have cutlery that looks like people. So I'm saying he's a fork. Okay. Um, they're genetically very diverse. Hard shells turn brownish tan as they age. Others come in deep greens, burnt oranges and goldenrod yellows. You have to choose one of those colors and do 200, 300 or 400 stitches in that color 
any shade or combination of the color and you can use more than one whip if you want to but you need to have clear beginning and ending photos and stitch count for each portion so it's basically anything that is green yellow so deep green burnt orange or goldenrod yellows <laughs> But you have to stitch in the color. Green? Green was one of them? Yep. You have to do all three colors or just one? No, just one. Okay. Choose one color. But you can use different variations of the one color. Gotcha. All right, Vicki? Okay, you're not going to believe me. So my portion of George, all right, come on, is this boat. There are, <laughs> after, there, I've got like 48,000 stitches in 934, which is that dark green. So I will be using George. <laughs> You'll be able to find that green easily. Yes, that green is easily found. Okay, um, one of mine is a newer whip that I started recently. It's called Shangri-La. It's from Kessler Designs. And there's so a pretty. whole lot of green going on right there. That is very, very, very pretty. Well, look at that butterfly. Yeah, and I'm working on the butterfly right now. So, I mean, green, nothing but green. I um, actually used my big red ship of life. I won't bother showing you again, but this is my color matching piece. And it turns out that the whole side border is in a deep green. So I had to do some work to get there, but then I just did my stitches on the deep green. Um, they come in interesting shapes and sizes. Some are lopsided and riddled with bumps. Others are elongated and smooth. Stitch on a wimp that either has something lopsided or bumpy. Lopsided or bumpy. Um, I'm thinking here. Um, you had to, so Cheryl had to have a hard one. I know, bumpy. So you get to the bone. Would my wreath be bumpy? Yes, your wreath would be bumpy, in my opinion. Uh, that's what I would think. Would the horns on a, a reindeer be bumpy? They could be lopsided too. They could be lopsided. Yeah. They're typically lopsided. I don't think they're symmetrical. But if you have a symmetrical one, I wouldn't use it. My rope thinking, is Sammy? bumpy. Um, I can show you mine while you're waiting. Okay. Okay. This is Autumn Nation, which Sammy should recognize since she gave it to me. And uh, this fence is actually lopsided. Mm. So little ordination fence. So are those um, pumpkins. Yeah. I think maybe my pumpkin could be considered lumpy. Yep. Those yep. sides are not smooth. Yeah, so. he's lumpy. He's definitely lumpy. All right. So that is where we got to with all the main parts of the prompts. Then there's the bonus. That's the bonus yeah. this month. You have to stitch 300 stitches on a piece with a gourd in the design. There's no alternate stitches and it has to be a gourd. It has to be a gourd. It can't be a pumpkin. A gourd. Pumpkin? Oh, I would, they're a gourd. I would, no, they're not. They're in the same family. They're not the same thing. So it has to be a gourd. Um, I don't have the exact answer on whether you can actually be a pumpkin or not but I would say knowing how specific she is with her um, her yeah. prompts for the bonuses, it would be a gourd, not a pumpkin. I don't know if I have something with a gourd. Well, I'm going to show you mine because I found one. I had to look very hard in my collection. But I actually found this little Lizzie Kate sampling Thanksgiving and it has that orange gourd there. And the reason I say it's gourd and not a pumpkin is it's long and skinny. It's not fat and round like a pumpkin. It's just in those deep oranges. Gotcha. But it was hard. I had lots of pumpkins. I'm Googling cross-stitch gourds. <laughs> Playing wow. with Jacks um, has different size and shape pumpkins. So one could be a gourd. 
Well, okay, y'all, there's one on Etsy. There's one on Etsy that I, I would have to buy it, but it says, oh, my gourd. And it has all the gourds lined up at the bottom. Cool. Well, for five points, you can spend some money and buy a new project. I'm sure I have one. I've got a lot of fall things. Yeah, if you look in the fall things and the Thanksgiving things. Hang on a minute. And while Sammy's still looking, then you do have the daily 30 back. So 30 minutes a day on whatever. Yeah, I do not have a gourd. Okay. I'm looking. So it's a hard bonus, yep. I just uploaded a bunch. Um, a cornucopia is not a gourd, right? No. Nope. Okay, hang on. I'm going to pull this up and you can tell me if this is a gourd. Because I think it might actually be. I... Uh, Close that. I have some people messaging me. Hey, you guys, you got some spelling mistakes. Yeah. Yes. Always. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen. I actually think this is a gourd right there. Yep, that would be a gourd. Would y'all think so? If you move your mouse out of the way, so we oh. can look at the actual thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think you could fob that off as a gourd. It would fit. Oh, good, I can work on my Disney Thanksgiving piece. There you go. That's all from me, Sammy. All right, that's the end of Daily Thirty. Um, all right, we are going to move into the Crystal Academy. So this week we um, we had spell sling over the weekend. Um, before I start, I am a car car. Uh, Lisa is a Rougarou and Vicky is a Wendigo. Um, Lisa and I were actually pitted against each other in the spell sling this weekend. I'm pretty sure Lisa didn't sleep all weekend um, based on her posts. <laughs> but did. Um, she, her, her team did beat my team. So, Only just though, it was a big close battle. It was my a team big lost battle. too. Mm. My team lost too. Yeah, ours was, I mean, like right at the last minute. But um, and they didn't take all our crystals. They just ended with more crystals than us. So, you know, it is what it is. It was fun. Um, this was a bad weekend for it. I mean, we, well, at least here in the States, we had Halloween. And I mean, that's what took most of my time. I was with my kids. But um, anyway, so it, this week we, we do have a new uh, class of spells. And this weekend is another spell sling. So, um, and in fact, I think the next several weekends... It's, it's spell slings every weekend. So um, we're trying to fit in a couple more spells before we, uh, to learn them before we, so we could use them. Okay, so the first one is, and I'm gonna butcher these names, Invocasi, Invocasi, I don't know. Anyway, it's a basic healing spell. That could be interesting. Um, so task one is stitch on a whip with something that could be injured. And Lisa, you are first this time. Well, I really think it would be pretty easy to pick anything that has an animal or a human in it. So mm -hmm. because of my penchant for double dipping at the moment and my focus on my um, scavenger hunt pieces, I could pick any of them. Um, I could pick my... my um, and an animal kidding them and injure any of those animals. Mm -hmm. I could injure Alice. Or the last one I hadn't shown you guys for a bit is this one. Or I could do my less we forget because you could injure that bugle player, especially if he tripped and shoved a corner up his face. <laughs> okay. Vicky? I'm going to use my advent animals because uh, you can injure any of those. Right. And I would um, use Zach. I'm going to mute um, just for a second. Okay. It has several animals on it that could be injured, and um, it would triple dip at that point between Magical Stitches, Daily 30, and Crystal Academy. So, um, and I, I forgot to ask what how many stitches was on Cheryl's this week. 200, 300, or 400. Okay. So, like... No, sorry, three, four, five. I did 300, and across the board, that's one task in each group done 300 stitches can i see yep. 
Okay, yep. number or task B for the first spell is a whip with something that could be used as a bandage. No, you can't use any whip and say the whip itself is a bandage because we all know how much it heals our hearts to be stitching. Um, so, Lisa, what, what are you using as a bandage? Okay, double dipping. Alice, because she has this big ribbon that you could tie around like a bandage. Yes. Vicky? Um, I'm going to use my snow person in the snow because he has a scarf. It could be used as a uh, bandage. Okay. And I'm going a little bit more extreme in the, I was going to use Anzac. And I'm going to use the sails off the boat to make a bandage. That works. Also, just bouncing off my head, I think I would think you could use um, flowers um, because you can like, you know, like mash them up and use them like a poultice and bandage yourself with that. Just a thought. Or mud. Or mud. Mm -hmm. Okay. Task three. <laughs> A whip with a plant that looks like a medicinal plant. Maybe I should have read the next task before I said that about the bandage. <laughs> so maybe a plant that looks like a medicinal um, plant. Oh, look, anything with a herb would be all right. I um, I'm going to take the easy option here. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but I could use my herb garden because there'd be rosemary or something there that would be a um medicinal or in particular and probably much more enjoyable if I can find it it's been you all out flicking through my my whips this one my lavender garden because lavender would make a good um, medicinal herb all right hang on I think I'm gonna use let me find it I kind of created a stock album of all my whips that I want to work on next year that's what I've got in No New Starts. It's easy to find them all that way. Uh, I don't see it though. Um, I think I'm going to work on my Paula Vaughn. Um, my Paula Vaughn May quilt because it has a bunch of wildflowers. And I think um, some of those could be wildflowers that they use to heal themselves. So here's what it looks like so far. Did y'all hear that? No. Just the Thank voice. You. Couldn't understand what he said. Thank oh, be thankful. Just be thankful. <laughs> okay. So mine, I think I would use the Shangri-La again to double dip it. Um, that flower reminds me of uh, the Tangled flower, you know, and it healed people. It was used as not the Rapunzel was, flower. Yeah. It was used as magical medicine, but it was used as a medicine. So I think I would go with that one. Okay, so that is it for the first spell. Let's see. The second spell is Mendigo. Um, repair an item, mend it, makes sense. Okay, task A, a whip that comes in pieces. Now, okay. I'm gonna go straight for my farmhouse Christmas because it comes in nine pieces nine different separate patterns, uh, whether you stitch them together or not, they're still nine separate parts. Right. Mickey? Sorry, my husband has come upstairs and so that's why I'm muting. <laughs> um, I'm gonna go with either my Advent animals because there's 25 parts, but I can also use George because there's over a hundred of us stitching that pattern. So that mm. can, that's in a lot of pieces. So sure. those are two and I'm trying to get Still, I have nine pages on George to finish before I reach my goal this year. And on this one, I can use my Dark Queen because um, she, it's a mystery so stitch along, so it comes out in different parts. They also said anything that has multiple pages, like a Hade, those each page is considered a piece. Um, I think that's, that's all the extra info I have on that one. <laughs> Um, okay. A whip that you have had to frog at some point. 
Does this mean every whip in your stash? Because for me, it totally does. Pretty, pretty close. So I'm not going to bother thinking which one it is at the moment. I'll see what I want to work on. And yeah, guarantee anything I do when I'm at a live stitching catch up. Yeah. And and for me, Anzac. I flunked oh, Anzac yes. so much in the beginning that that's the first one that comes to mind. My Advent animals, I've had to frog so many times on those and mm -hmm. budge, <laughs> budge them. So, okay. Whip C or task C, a whip with something that can be fixed if broken. Okay. So again, because I'm trying to multitask and double dip, I would be wanting to fix my hornet if I broke it. In fact, I actually had to play a tuba when I started playing that had a hole in it and I fixed it with sticky tape and blue tack. <laughs> okay, Vicky? Um, I'll, I'll use George because the boats get holes in them and they have to be fixed. Mm -hmm. People can break bones. Boats yeah. yeah, lots of soldiers in there too. Yeah. Um, where was I going with this one? I don't, don't know. Ginger, where you gingerbread going? men can get eaten. Yeah. This one's yeah. pretty cute. I have a vase can be broken. Um, now, a flower can't necessarily, I mean, I don't know how you would fix a flower. So maybe that one doesn't quite fit, but, but basically anything you could put back together with super glue or whatever. Yeah, you've got to so, be able to stick back together, I think it said. Huh? Is this the stick back together one or is that the monthly? Um, well, it says that can can be fixed if broken. Okay. So. It has to be able to be fixed. Um, and there in two, I'm trying to stick to Anzac or legendary creatures and each one of those have stuff in them that can be broken and fixed. Okay, so that is it for the Crystal Academy for this week. All right, so next, I wanted to briefly touch on a couple things in um, Sydney, am I saying? the new monthly events. Now, Lisa um, Lisa did a video over on her channel, which is Shady Tree Stitchers, and of, of all the monthly things that are going on this next month. So if you want the, you know, people telling what they're working on and things like that, you want to head on over for that. But I just wanted to touch on a couple of things that I, that I was told to. Okay, give me one second. I got to pull it up. Somebody told you what to do? Yep, I get that sometimes. Okay. So one of the events we're doing this month is called Stitch Awards. And what they did is they drew five categories um, that you have to make part of your whip fit into. It doesn't have to be the whip itself. It doesn't have to be the designer. It can be something in the whip um, that has to fit into one of these five categories. And um, it, they all have to start with the letter of the week that was drawn. So the fir this first week, the letter was F, and then you have to fit it into one of the five categories. What we wanted to make note of, because when, we, when they first released Stitch Gories, they, um, you had to complete 250 on each one of those categories. Um, and if you completed all of them, then you got, an, I don't know, an entry into a drawing. Well, um, now you get three entries for doing that version because they have included what they consider a light version. And so on the light version, you only have to do 100 stitches for each one of the categories, 200 if you don't have something that'll fit the category, and you'll only get one entry for that week. So if that makes it easier to complete your week, um, there is a light version so make sure and double read the directions to the event because there have been some changes made recently so that was it that was what I needed to touch on for semi sane there's also an event called connect four where you try and get four um four d projects from different designers to fit the same category you get to pick the category so make them fit however you want and then the regular version, I think, is 500 stitches on each of them. And then the, yep. the insane version is 1,000 stitches on each of them. I'm doing the insane version. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, and, and as we, we, we said, we're actually double dipping them with the around the world, which are 1,000 anyway. So if you can make your, your category fit in, 
right. no extra stitches. So what was your what was your theme, Sammy? Have you got one yet? I forgot. We talked about it last week, and I had this awesome idea, and I could not remember for the life of me. I did not write it down, but I ended up using animals to fit all four of mine. Because that's what I did. Animals, um, legendary creatures are animals. Alice has the the swans behind her, and Dark Queen of the Sea has the fish. So animals. I use I use George because there's a horse in George. I use my uh, advent animals, of course, duh. I use my villains because there's Scar and Shere Khan, and I use my uh, other first Christmas because there's a camel in it. Okay. Um, okay, so also over on Lisa's video that she just uploaded, is still uploading, something like that. It's up, it's up there now. It's up there now. Um, she has the monthly four magical stitches. However, Vicky wanted to run through and talk about each of them real quick while she's here to kind of clarify her thoughts on how it was supposed to work and any questions that she's already seen come across uh, magical stitches. So she's going to just give us her little monologue, and we're, but we're not going to worry about going through each individual thing, all three of us. Okay, so, so I'll read them and I'll see what the questions, and I'll see if I can remember exactly what everybody asked. Um... Good Lord, I just lost them. This is what happens. There we go. November. Yeah, okay, stitching extra credit. Okay, so uh, one of the things we have to do is we're finding Chernobog, Chernobog and he's half Minotaur and half bat, half bat god so stitch on a whip that has two animals you can put together to make a villain so it doesn't have to be a real villain it can be a, it can be a made-up villain um i i was looking at someone's and they put a they put a rat and another animal that started with a b and they made it a brat <laughs> i thought that was kind of cool and we we said in our video that we thought it'd be creative if you could come up with a name for it so yeah, she, I, I thought that was fine. Um, so, and another one where uh, they, you know how they have the hot air balloons at the Mercy, Macy's Day Parade, the big mm -hmm. balloons. This is where we're getting this for the, light, the Buzz Lightyear balloon. Stitch on a whip that has something that could be broken and then glued back together. That's where the gluing is. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, and you could just double dip that pretty much straight with the um, Crystal Academy. They're the same idea so this is a different one because stitch on a whip that has taken the place of another and becoming the favorite to work on so you know how you start you're working on a project and you just love it and you're like well okay i guess i need to go. it's time to switch my rotation now i'm falling back in love with this one again you know we all do that i don't know about y'all but i do that all the time mm -hmm. um no. so stitch on a whip that caused you to get in trouble <laughs> Maybe with your significant other, <laughs> you bought that Chatelaine when you shouldn't have bought that Chatelaine and fully kid Chatel. <laughs> um, you bought that pattern keeper <laughs> thing, so <laughs> you bought the Kindle, so you couldn't use the cat, you know, the pattern keeper. Uh, you got in trouble with your own checkbook because you're like, crap, shouldn't have done that. Or your skill level, you've done something harder. That's what I meant by in trouble. You know, mm -hmm. you don't have to tell me what you got in trouble by. Just, you know, yeah, this one got me in trouble some way or another. Um, and the last one is, you know, when we do the World Showcase, we're in our very last World Showcase. We're in Mexico, so we're watching Coco or the three cal caballeras, caballeras, caballeros. How do you say that? It's with Donald Duck. Anyway. Um, make sure that when you're showing your video and making sure your post, show the movie credits, the movie, the start of the movie and the moving credits, because a lot of people don't do that, but that's all I got. So did you guys have any questions on that? Oh. Also, pretty straightforward to me. I think the I really like the combining of the animals. I think that's on what mm. fun. Um, so really, you just need a whip with two animals in it and then combine them however you like. Sounds good. Name your creature and make it a little more fun for everyone. All right. All right. So that's all we have for you this week. Um, if you have any questions, please comment below and I will do my best to get you an answer. Um, and 
again, check back next week. I'll do my best to try and be here. Um, <laughs> or if not, one of us will. One of us will be here. <laughs> yeah. So, all right. I hope you all have a great stitching week, and we'll talk to y'all later.